Hello Year 9s, it's Mrs Wythe here and I'm going to be taking you through Lesson 16. I hope you've all had a really great half term and are ready to tackle Romeo and Juliet again. I'm just going to do a very quick recap as we've had a little bit of a break. We know that Romeo and Juliet are now married but they're forced to be apart. Romeo has killed Tybalt, Juliet's cousin, and has now been banished. Capulet, Juliet's father, has agreed that Juliet will marry Paris. So if we have a look in my little cartoon here. This is basically the entire play boiled down to three little pictures. We know that Romeo and Juliet's family hate each other. We followed Romeo and Juliet as they've fallen in love and they've got married and have been torn apart. And now this is the point we are in the play. OK, we're getting towards the end and we're going to find out what's going to be happening next. So in this lesson, we're going to see that the drama is getting very, very intense now. Juliet's going to learn of her intended wedding to Paris. She rejects the offer because, of course, she knows, as we do, that she's already married. And in the eyes of God, as she believes it, um, it's a sin to get married when you're already married. Lord Capulet insults and disowns her and leaving Juliet very distraught. OK, I've done a little bit of recap. But I just want you to note down in your notes here, Juliet is in turmoil. She's very, very upset. OK, what are the two reasons why Juliet is upset? Once you've made a note of that, a little extension here. How has Juliet's tragic flaw led her to this turmoil? And here we have lots of answers for this. So firstly, her husband Romeo has had to leave the city. She's had to say goodbye to him and has no idea when she's gonna see him again. Her cousin Tybalt was killed. To make things worse, he was killed by Romeo. She feels conflicted. She should be loyal to her family and also to her, fam her husband. She can't tell people about her wedding to Romeo because he is a Montague, the enemy of her family. Juliet's tragic flaw is her passionate love for Romeo, which is causing turmoil in her family. Back in Act 3, Scene 4, Capulet has said this to Paris. Just take a note of how completely and utterly confident he is. He has no um, reason to doubt that this isn't going to happen. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay more, I doubt it not. A Thursday, let it be. A Thursday, tell her. She shall be married to this noble Earl. So he's made a decision. Obviously hasn't thought to consult anybody else. He's the man of the house and he has decided that Juliet will get married to Paris. Juliet is about to find out about this news. She does not know that her father has promised Paris that she will marry him. Right, I'm going to take you through the first passage we're going to be looking at here. First, Lady Capulet um, arrives at Juliet's room. She's got news for Juliet. So here in the picture here we've got, we've got um, Lady Capulet there, very finely dressed. And Juliet, who's obviously, well, obviously her mother doesn't know, but she's woken up with Romeo. She's still in her nightgown, okay, and she's about to hear the news. Now, Lady Capulet's already had a, a chat with Juliet about um, Tybalt's death particularly. Lady Capulet comes in by saying, but now I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. Juliet responds, and joy comes well in such a needy time. What are they? I beseech your ladyship. So Lady Capulet has said that she's got some good news to share with Juliet. And Juliet's quite positive. She points out that actually it's not a great time. What's the good news? Lady Capulet says, well, well, Thou hast a careful father, child, one who put thee from thy heaviness, has sorted out such a sudden joy, day of joy that thou expectest not, nor I looked for, not for. Lady Capulet here is saying that Lord Capulet is a careful father. He's a good father. He's looking after his child. Okay, He's come up with a plan to take her from her heaviness. He sorted out this sudden day of joy. Juliet says, Madam, in happy time, what day is that? She doesn't know yet. 
Lady Capulet comes back with the news. Marry, my child. Early next Thursday morn, the gallant, young and noble gentleman, the County Paris at St Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Lady Capulet obviously thinks this is great news. She's pointed out the virtues of Paris, okay? She doesn't seem to have any issues with this. She thinks this is a good way to go. Juliet's quick to respond. She's not going to marry him, and this is not what Lady Capulet expects. She says, Now, by St Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed, ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you, tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet, and when I do, I swear, it shall be with Romeo, whom you know I hate, rather than Paris. These are news indeed. Lady Capulet's response here is, here comes your father, tell him so yourself, and see how he will take it at your hands. So Juliet's been saying basically, no, I'm not marrying him, okay? I'm confused. Why are you hurrying me? I wonder at this haste that I must wed. Surely he needs to come and woo me first. Basically, he needs to come and get to know me before we get married. I pray you, tell my lord and father, madam. And here Juliet acknowledges that her father is her lord, the person who really dictates her life. I will not marry yet. And this is where Juliet's clever with her words. She says to her mother, I swear it shall be Romeo. And we, of course, the audience know she's already married to Romeo. But she's pretending to her mum, to her mother, that she hates Romeo because, of course, Romeo is an enemy of the family, whom you know I hate rather than Paris. And here, Lady Capulet, we're not quite sure. It depends, it depends on how the actress plays this. Is she frightened of her husband? Lord Capulet's about to turn up and she knows he is not going to be very happy with Juliet's response. OK, and basically she says, tell your dad, tell your father. OK, see how he takes this news. So into the room comes Capulet and the nurse is there as well. And you'll notice as we go through, the nurse does not get much to say here. Capulet's very pleased with himself. He's made an excellent match for his daughter. He thinks he's sorted out a problem. OK, this wedding is going to make her feel a lot happier. He walks into the room and he actually finds that Juliet is is very upset. OK, we know many of the reasons why she's so upset, but Capulet's puzzled. OK, and as I read this section, have a look at the question marks, have a look at the imagery he uses. And basically, he's very concerned and he does come over as concerned. You know, she's crying and he wants to get this sorted. When the sun sets, the earth doth drivel dew. But for the sunset of my brother's son, it rains outright. He assumes this is about Tybalt's death. How now? A conduit girl? What still in tears? Ever more showering? In one little body that counterfeits as a, a bark, a sea, a wind? For still thy eyes, which I may call the sea, do ebb and flow with tears. The bark thy body is, sailing in the salt flood. The winds thy sighs, who, raging in thy tears, and they with them, without a sudden calm, will overset thy tempest-tossed body. How now, wife? Have you delivered her to her our decree? Basically, he's pointing out how she's in floods of tears, okay? Her body's shaking under all this emotion. She's got, he's got question marks here. He's trying to work out what's going on here. Down here, he says, have you delivered to her our decree? Now, a decree is an order. So he turns to his wife and he basically has said, have you told her about my plan? okay or our decree this is like a law okay it's not to be discussed it's to be given he's not expecting this lady capulet responds i sir she will none she gives you thanks i would the fool were married to her grave exclamation mark okay lady capulet is not appearing to be very sympathetic with juliet and we're going to come back to this sentence here in a little bit here i would the fool were married to her grave. That's going to be a very important sentence. So in that brief scene there, we've got three speaking characters in the passage. The nurse is there, but she hasn't said anything yet. We've got Lady Capulet, we've got Juliet, and of course we've got Lord Capulet. And I'd like you to write down one note for each character. 
Summarise what they have just said in one sentence. So what has Lady Capulet just said? What has Juliet said? And what has Lord Capulet said in one sentence? And if you want to do a little extension there, I wish the fool were married to her grave. That was the sentence I mentioned before. How is this an example of foreshadowing? So a sentence from Lady Capulet, from Juliet and from Lord Capulet. What did each character say? And here we have Lady Capulet. Juliet, your father has arranged for you to be married to Paris next Thursday. Juliet says, tell my father I cannot be married to Paris. And Lord Capulet, Juliet, why are you crying so much? So that's what they've all said so far. Juliet is about to tell her father that she will not marry Paris. This is a tense scene with huge conflict between Juliet and her parents. The picture there, you can see that actually she's on her bed. This actress here has grabbed her pillow as if defending herself really. And you can see that Capulet's looming in. He's got his finger out, outstretched to her in quite a threatening pose really. And she looks fairly defenseless there. To start with, Capulet's confused. He's given his decree. He's told Juliet what's gonna happen. So he's not understanding it. Have a look at his punctuation. Have a look at how he's, he's trying to understand what she's saying. Soft, take me with you. Take me with you, wife. How? Will she none? Does she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Doth she not clown her breast, unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Juliet's response. Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that is meant love. So Capulet here is saying, Shh, hold on a second, I don't understand. Take me with take you me with you. He's saying, Can you explain this to me, wife? Okay? I don't understand. How will she none? Why won't she get married? Doesn't she give us thanks? Isn't she really proud of what we've done for her? Doesn't she think herself really blessed? Okay, we've made this amazing wedding for her, this amazing um, match. So worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom. We've got one, two, three, four question marks in that, that one piece there. And Juliet responds that yes, she is thankful that they've done this, but she doesn't really want to have anything to do with this at all. Right now, Capulet is getting really confused. He's not used to people going against his word. He's made his decision and now he's not understanding still. Let's keep with the, the punctuation. Let's have a little look at the words. He's repeating himself. He can't express how he's feeling. How, 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 chop logic. What is this? Proud and I thank you and I thank you not. And yet not proud, mischief minion you. Thank me no thankings, nor proud me no prouds, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hurdle thither. Out, you green sickness carrion, out you baggage, you tallow face. Lady Capulet responds, fee, fee, what, are you mad? Juliet really cannot respond to this. She's not being able to get her, her words in. Good father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience, but not to speak a word. She's literally down on her knees. She's begging to be heard so that she can actually get her argument across. So dad up here is saying, he's con he, Juliet's very quick and she's a, a very intelligent girl and he's confused with what she's trying to express. So this is why he's repeating himself. But he threatens her again. She has to get to the church. She has to get married or he will drag her on a hurdle thither. Basically, that was a piece of sort of wooden fencing that you would be taken into the um, town on the back of a horse, really, as a, as a form of punishment. He says to her, out, you green sickness carrion. He says she looks like a corpse. She's so pale. Out, you baggage, you tallow face. So not only is he threatening her, he's also making some very personal insults. More insults from Capulet. Hang thee, young baggage, disobedient wretch. I tell you what, get thee to a church on Thursday, nor ne or never look me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. My fingers itch. Wife, we scarce thought us blessed that God had lent us but to this only child. Now I see this one is too much, and that we have a curse in having her. Out on her 
Heidling. He's saying here that, you know, they've only got the one child and this is too much. You know, she's gone against them. The line here, my fingers itch. In some um, performances, you actually have Capulet literally striking her. And um, there's the implication there that he can put violence on his only child. The nurse comes in now. She's in a very precarious position. Her livelihood is with the Capulets. She relies on them for her board and her lodgings. She knows that Juliet's married and she also knows that she's going to be in big trouble if they find out this. But she can't stand aside while Juliet's being threatened so. So she comes in and she tries to get a word in, but Capulet again is not used to people disobeying him and he turns on the nurse as well. The nurse says, God in heaven bless her, you are to blame my lord to rate her so. Capulet. And why, my lady wisdom, hold your tongue, good prudence, smatter with your gossips, go. Nurse, I speak no treason. Capulet, oh God, ye gooden. Nurse, may not one speak? Capulet, peace, you mumbling fool, utter your gravity out of Goffet's bowl, for here we need it not. Lady Capulet says, you are too hot. So Capulet is turned on the nurse and he's now attacking her, calling her a mumbling fool, telling her to go and gossip somewhere else, that she has no importance and no standing in this. And of course, we know that it's been the nurse that's brought Juliet up, but she doesn't get a say in what's happening here. Now, this last speech was really long, so I've cut it down a little bit and just pulled out a couple of, of bits that I think are really important. To sum up, Capulet is really cross. He's made that very, very evident. He feels that he has done his duty getting Juliet a great husband, a gentleman of noble parentage, of fair demises, youthful and nobly aligned, stuffed as they, stuffed as they say with honourable parts. He dismisses her arguments and threatens her. If she doesn't marry Paris, Capulet will kick her out. Advise you and you be mine. I'll give you to my friend and you be not. Hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul, I'll, I'll now acknowledge you. Lord Capulet has got nowhere to go. He makes this grand threat that basically he's going to kick her out of the household and her future would be incredibly bleak for a young girl out on the streets by herself. And, and this is his alternative. If she doesn't obey him, she will hang, beg, starve, die in the streets. And at this point, he's saying that he doesn't care. This is her option. She has to do what she's told. So we're going to look more closely at the language that Capulet uses towards his daughter in, in this scene. He has two modes of parenting, really. He's insulting her and he's threatening her. So let's have a look at some examples on the next slide. Here are some of the insults. He calls her unworthy, mistress minion, you green sickness carrion. Now, you might not understand all the words, but you can see that he's on the attack here. He's finding things that are unpleasant to say about her. You baggage, you tallow face, young baggage, disobedient wretch, a curse. Then we get on to the um, um, other things he's saying here. Wretched, mewling fool, whining mammet. Now, those came from the bit of the speech that I cut. But you can see that these are really unpleasant things to say to your daughter. She's obviously in a lot of distress. And yet he's attacking her and a lot of these finish actually with exclamation marks as well. Now we get on to some of the threats that he makes towards her. Go with Paris to St Peter's Church or I will drag thee on a hurdle hither. He'll, he says he's going to take her and drag her through the streets of the town in front of everyone. Hang thee, so threatening her life. Again, get thee to the church a Thursday or never look me in the face. So you haven't got any option, you have to do this. My fingers itch. We ran over that. He's threatening violence towards her. This came from the other speech here that I cut a little bit. Gaze, graze where you will. You shall not house with me. So basically, I will not feed you. You have to go and find food elsewhere. You will be mine. I'll give you to my friend. This sense of property that the man owns the women in his family. And it's up to him, you know, what he does with them. And this is fairly, fairly harsh. Hang, beg, starve, die in the streets. I'll never acknowledge thee. He does hold all the power here. And he's cutting off Juliet's, um, you know, options that she's got. So we've seen how Capulet has insulted and threatened Juliet. Shakespeare has written his play so that we are actually on Juliet's side. Before the next slide, write a list of words that describe Lord Capulet's character. See if you can maybe get four or five words to describe him. An 
on this slide we can see a lot of the um, ways that we can describe him and none of these are appealing characters in, in, a, in any person, let alone a parent. He is cruel, controlling, he's vicious. He turns on her very quickly. Despicable, tyrannical, he is behaving like a tyrant. Okay, lots and lots of power and, and really not a lot of sympathy to go with that. He's mean, he's hateful, he's spiteful, he's possessive. He controls everybody with his possession. He's malicious and he's savage. So maybe you had some of those words. This is not a picture of a man that um, the audience are going to warm to at all. A little extension question. Do you have any sympathy with Capulet at all? Think about the time this play was written 400 years ago when family structure was very, very different. I would imagine that most of you have no sympathy with him whatsoever. But actually, sometimes you might be able to see that he too is in a difficult position. There are many advantages for men under patriarchy, but one of the downsides is, as if the women in your family don't follow your rules, others in society will see you as weak and they judge you. For example, um, women or girls not following the rules could be um, if they lose their virginity before their marriage, um, if they show disobedience or disrespect. Your reputa reputation relies on your control over your family. Does this help you see things from Capulet's point of view? I'm still probably imagining, probably not. Now, obviously, if you're in class, we'd be modelling this together and then we'd be writing our own. It is a really, really good um, thing to do if you can do this at home, because it's great practice and it keeps you, um, you know, working on those C's paragraphs. So here's the model. The question is, how does Shakespeare present Lord Capulet in Act 3? You are now going to write another paragraph on this question using the evidence from this scene. So the first one, obviously, we're going to look at together and then hopefully you'll be, have time to do the second one yourselves. Here's how we're going to structure the paragraph. Explain how Shakespeare presents Capulet. Use some of the words from the previous activity. So that's going to be your statement. Briefly summarise what's happening in Act 3, Scene 5. And then you're going to provide a quotation that shows Capulet's character. So that's the evidence we're going to need. Explore that quotation. and We obviously call that inference. And then discuss how the quotation will have an impact on Juliet and the audience. So that's going to lead on to our effect on the reader as well. OK, so here's the example on the next slide. Quick reminder of the question. How does Shakespeare present Lord Capulet in Act 3? So, number one, explain how Shakespeare presents Capulet. In Act 3, scene 5, Shakespeare presents Lord Capulet as a spiteful and vicious father, determined to exercise control over his young daughter. Next bit, summarising what's happening in Act 3, scene 5. Before Paris has even been to visit her, Lord Capulet tells Juliet that she must marry him in a few days' time. Oh, skipped a few there. Number three, provide a quotation. After she refuses, he erupts in a violent tirade. So a tirade is like a, a great big sort of showering of words, saying that she should hang, beg, starve, die in the streets if she doesn't obey him. Then we're going to go on to explore the quotation. This is a truly devastating threat. He is not mild or understanding. He does not care about Juliet's concerns about marrying a complete stranger. Instead, he tries to force her into obeying him without question by threatening to disown and humiliate her. Leading us on to five, discuss how the quotation would impact Juliet and the audience. Juliet is already suffering. Her cousin is dead and her husband has left the city, has fled the city. But this terrible threat from her father is perhaps the worst. He, is com he completely de degrades his only daughter when she is clearly upset. Now, it'd be absolutely fantastic if you could write your own C's paragraph here. So it's the same question, how does Shakespeare present Lord Capulet in Act 3? So you might want to go back and find out another really juicy quotation that you could use for this one, and you're going to follow exactly the same pattern. You're going to explain how Shakespeare presents Capulet, OK, um, then you're going to summarise what's happening. You can provide a qu that quotation that you found, explore the quotation and then discuss how that quotation would have an impact on Juliet and the audience. OK, you might also, if you want a bit of an extension here, you might also want to write about how Lord Capulet has changed throughout the act. Okay. 
definitely have a go at this. Grab your pen and I'd like you to write down the letter or letters that you think is true. Why is Lord Capulet so angry at Juliet in this scene? Is it A, because he's already given his word that she will marry Paris? If she disobeys him, Lord Capulet will break a promise, ruining his reputation. Is it B, because he has found out that she has married Romeo, his family's sworn enemy? C, because Juliet has insulted and threatened him? D, because Juliet should obey him completely because she is his only daughter? Or E, because he tells Juliet that she is a disobedient wretch. So out of those five, pick down which ones you actually think are correct. And last slide. Okay, so the answers that were correct. Why is Lord Capulet so angry at Juliet in this scene? Because she has already, he has already given his word that she will marry Paris. If she disobeys him, Lord Capulet will break a promise, ruining his reputation. And because Juliet should obey him completely because she is his daughter. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Year 9. That is the first lesson of the week complete. And I will be doing the following lesson. Thank you very much. Bye.